Today, Andrea is transforming a piece of furniture using a technique that, surprisingly, she's never used before. I am going to be attempting to turn this bright red chair into a totally different color using chalk paint. But before the work could begin, we needed to test out how comfy this chair really was. And it was pretty darn comfy. Not getting up. This is really comfy. I also did some measuring and figured out that this couch was the perfect height to jump. This project is part two in a three-week series where we're taking our friend's living room and giving it a refresh. And this chair definitely gave Andrea a run for her money. I started by giving it a thorough vacuum to remove any dust or hair. And then I taped off the legs so I wouldn't get any paint on them. Stop. No, I haven't tried this before, but I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Hopefully it goes well. So to start out, you don't want to use full strength paint. I'm going to be using chalk paint and I'm going to be diluting it. I'm going to try a one to one ratio. Try it out on the back of the chair first and we'll see how it goes. Hey, what happened to your voice? <laughs> Swallowed a frog. So what color is it? It's green. I love green. <laughs> you know, to me it kind of looks like um, swamp water. <laughs> it's my favorite kind of green. <laughs> you like that swampy green look? I do. I think this will be a good one. I don't want it too bright. This is Dixie Belle Collar Greens. We went and picked it up at a local retailer, which is awesome because I didn't want to wait for shipping. Did you get it? I did. Dixie Belle! Okay, so what I've learned from watching all those videos is you want to first make sure your piece is really wet. So I have just the plain water here. I'm going to spray it down. And if you're worried that I'm about to ruin this awesome chair, well, Ash is actually planning on having it reupholstered. We are trying painting as kind of a last ditch effort to do, you know, just something else that's easier, costs less money, and could turn out really awesome. Uh, could you use the microphone? I'm really struggling to hear you on the camera. Can't talk any louder, I'm sorry. This thing on. I don't know about this. I'm thinking there's like scotch card or something on it. Okay, I mean it looks like it's working. Okay, so the idea on this is that you water your paint down a lot. It's supposed to act more as a dye, so I'm not gonna hopefully end up with a crispy painted piece of fabric after this. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Uh-oh, hey, uh, babe, I need some paper towels. I'm, I'm dripping down on the leg. Here you go. It's dried on you. Thanks, babe. It's dried now. I love you. As I started applying that first coat and saw just how much the fabric was soaking it up, I realized this was going to be quite a long project. And a lot of projects are like this where it looks worse before it looks better. I have used up that entire, I think it was 32 ounces of paint on one coat. So I'm going to go get more paint and hope that they have that color in stock. I'm starting to think that my high hopes of two coats is probably not realistic. Before I head out and get more paint, I'm going to set up a fan on this. It's just to help it dry faster because you do want it to dry completely between coats, which means coat number two is going to happen tomorrow, hopefully by tomorrow. <laughs> I 
back. It's been a few hours and it's actually already dry. It's completely dry to the touch. I think because it's such a windy day here. I'm going to go ahead and try and do the second coat just because I don't know if this is going to end up needing like five coats and it needs so much time to dry in between. I'm thinking I better go ahead and get another coat on so we can try and get this finished up this week. As I started applying the second coat, the color was really showing up and I started feeling really hopeful. then reality set in. So I just finished the second coat and as you can see it's it's not covering as much as I want it to. It's working like it feels like it's soaking in but at this rate it also feels like I'm probably gonna need five more coats. I'm gonna go do some homework and try and trouble to shoot and see if I need a different kind of paint if maybe I need to water it down less. You can do it, I believe in you. I really don't want to quit. Like I want to figure out how to make it to work. It's looking a little bit questionable. <laughs> Day two, we've given this plenty of time to dry. I had to go do a little research and I'm pretty sure I was watering my paint down too much. I must have found the one blog that said to water it down 50-50 and everybody else says, don't water it down, just spray water. So I'm gonna give that a try. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and give everything a sanding with this sanding pad and that just helps give it a softer feel. Right now it's feeling a little bit rough, a little bit stiff. So hopefully that'll knock some of that down and then we'll do the next coat of paint. <laughs> one side of this cushion and my hand is already hurting really bad. I've used half my container of paint because I'm not diluting it. Obviously it's gonna take another coat after this at least so I'm feeling really like yeah. it's a fun project. Oh yeah. I really hope in the end we're saying this is worth it <laughs> and if not we'll be saving all y'all from that. <laughs> you can do it babe, just think. You may only have two or three more coats. <laughs> Attempted to get out my paint sprayer. This is painful. It's so slow. First coat done of the day, or mostly done, and I didn't water the actual paint down this time. I just sprayed it really good and then buffed it in and it's definitely holding up better. It still soaks in, but it's definitely a little bit more solid. And so I wish I would have timed that from coat number one. I am officially all out of my little containers of paint. I don't think our store in town has any more of it. And so I'm gonna run and get a tintable chalk paint from Lowe's and try and have it matched similarly because I still need at least one more, if not two more. Or three hopefully more. Hopefully not more <laughs> coats of paint.
After going to Lowe's to pick up a larger container of tintable chalk paint, I got started on the fourth coat. about like painted sandpaper currently. <laughs> Let's sand it down smooth and fingers crossed that somehow one more coat will do it and this is gonna turn out great. Yeah. Possible right. <laughs> Absolutely. After sanding the entire chair I started on my fifth and hopefully final coat. Okay you gotta see this now it's got like this two-toned we're going for a Christmas chair here. If you do like this, it's red. I also changed up my technique a bit for this last coat and found that I really liked dipping my brush in water and then into the undiluted paint. Thankfully, the fifth coat provided solid coverage and so once it dried, we were ready to take it back over to our friend's house. <laughs> How do I get out of here? I've never used this door before. I feel like one of the kids. In the end, the chair actually looked great. The color was wonderful and the space, it really fit the design and the aesthetic we were going for. But there was one major flaw and it was a potentially fatal flaw. You see, this chair looked really beautiful, but it did not feel beautiful. <laughs> Yes. What? You're running a little exfoliation. <laughs> I feel like because I have pants and a shirt on, it's okay. But if you got bare skin on this thing, gosh, <laughs> it's not gonna fly. So let's talk about this project. Did we nail it or did we fail it? I'm pretty sure this was a clear fail. This is like what, our 50th video now? And up until this point, we've of course had setbacks and things go wrong all the time, but this is the first time that we've had just a piece that's totally unsalvageable. Like we finished and there's nothing to do except for reupholster the chair now. Oh. And we bring this up because we actually almost scrapped this video entirely, but we realized in the end, wait, we don't need to scrap this video because there's still valuable things that we can share with you guys. And hopefully the adventure was entertaining enough that it was worth coming along for the ride. So now let's talk about some things that we wish we had known before we even started this project. And for the record, I would have really loved it if somebody else had made a video like this yes. so that I didn't waste all this time painting this chair. Okay, so the first thing that we learned is that the type of fabric that your furniture is definitely plays a huge part and is really important. Ours was more of a textured weave and was definitely not 100% cotton. From what I've read, a smoother, more fine weave cotton fabric will work best, but I do think it's a good idea if you do this to test it on either a pillow or the back of the furniture or somewhere where you're not going to see just to get a good idea of how it's actually going to feel. Second, I think it's important to have realistic expectations when you're painting fabric. And while some paints may work better than others and some fabrics are definitely better to be painted, it's still going to look and feel like painted fabric in the end. So in a nutshell, that piece of furniture is probably never going to feel as soft as it originally did after you've painted it. Even though there are products out there that do a better job, it's probably just not going to feel as cozy as it once did. 
The third thing I wish I would have known before we started this is that it is definitely not a time saver. Not at all. For this piece, we ended up doing five coats and our time lapses in the video make it look deceptively fast, but it was like painfully slow. And you have to wait for all of those coats to dry. Yeah. Just as a comparison, if you saw last week's video, that piece which was incredible and had all these firsts and she did all these amazing things and took her much longer than a normal piece. Well, the piece this week actually took took as long, maybe even longer, and it wasn't even that fantastic in the end. So definitely know this takes a ton of time. The next thing I wish I would have known is how much paint this actually uses. Like I feel like that was the most shocking part is it is soaking up so much paint. And so even though I was watering it down initially, I went through probably like three or four times as much paint. Well, probably more than that actually, because I've made what, three trips to buy more paint. In the end, we bought out all of the Dixie Bell color that we had locally, so we had to switch to another paint. So that's definitely something that's good to know on the front end, especially yeah. if you're doing a larger piece like what we did, is it's going to take a lot of paint. So overall, I think painting upholstery is something that's best done as a last resort. Like maybe you've thrifted this cool little sofa or a small chair and you want to get them reupholstered eventually, and you're thinking, you know, I'll try painting it. Like that might be a good safe option, but it's not gonna look or feel like an actual reupholstered piece of furniture. And we wanna go ahead and say here that obviously we are not experts in this. This is the first time I painted upholstery, and so we're sharing from our experience and what I've read online and searching for answers, but if you have painted upholstery and you've done it successfully, please feel free to help the rest of us and share in the comments maybe some tips and tricks. So now that this chair is finished, we're actually really excited to move on to next week's video where we're gonna finish out this three-part series on redecorating our friend's living room. So we will see you in next week's video as we finish up this series. Okay, now let's make jokes, 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 jokes. So, two guys walk into a bar. One says, yo, um, I don't really go to bars much. And the other one was like, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. Let's go somewhere else. Is that your joke? Yeah, that's the end. Our time last is, dang it, our time last is, the, the choices I made and what, the, you know. This isn't going very well. It's not going very well. So join, join us. us. <laughs> join us. So I'm not hey, interrupting. She's interrupting me every time I thought. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish <laughs> my thought right now. <laughs> Your arms like pushing me forward, so I'm like slouching more and more and more as the video goes on. <laughs> this whole time, as we've been filming, I keep thinking like, man, we're really close to <laughs> I know. I actually did this one time where I looked at you and I went like that when I turned my head because I was like, you're a lot closer than you normally are. Get all the light coming in, guys. I just feel like we're. Father? <laughs> Why we finish each other's sandwiches? Thanks. Thanks again! Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Just sing it with me. Our mental synchronization can only have one explanation. You and that were just meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> Yo!